Dear students, in this lecture we will be dealing with double cage induction motor. The normal squirrel cage induction motor, even if it is cost effective for any application, the disadvantage is poor starting torque, high starting current and poor operating power factor. And it is because of the low resistance for the rotor circuit. Since it is short circuited permanently, we cannot add or we cannot have any additional resistance on the rotor circuit. Because of that, the starting torque is very poor and the starting current is very high. But in the case of slip ring induction motor, through the slip rings that are connected to the rotor circuit, we can add a variable resistance. At the beginning, the resistance can be kept as high by which the starting torque can be improved and the starting current can be reduced. And for running condition, we can bring the variable resistance to zero or we can cut off the starting resistance. And the high Operating power factor also can be obtained for slip ring induction motor. But these possibilities are not there in the case of squirrel cage induction motor. So in order to have the better performance for the starting purpose, there should be higher resistance on the rotor circuit. And for running condition, it should be a low resistance, which is possible by adjusting the resistance on the rotor in the case of slip ring induction motor and which is not possible in the case of squirrel cage induction motor. And the modifications that are made in the case of squirrel cage induction motor is one is double cage induction motor and the other is deep bar cage induction motor. And we will be discussing on double cage induction motor. We will discuss the constructional details of double cage induction motor. The stator is same as that of the normal three phase induction motor. And on the rotor side, we have some modifications that are made. When we compare double cage induction motor with the normal squirrel cage induction motor. Similar to squirrel cage induction motor, we have the cage construction on the rotor side, but we have two different cages. These cages are named as outer or starting cage and inner or running cage. Outer cage is made in such a way that it will be providing high starting torque. It will help to reduce the starting current. It is designed with high resistance and low reactance and it is made of aluminum, brass or bronze material in order to have high resistance for the cage. In the case of inner or running cage, it is meant for good performance during the running condition. And for the same, the resistance will be low and it will be having high reactance. And the rotor bars will be made of copper in order to reduce the resistance. In the figure we can see two different slots that are provided on the rotor. At the outer side of the core we have a slot that is provided for the starting or outer winding or outer cage. And on the inner side we have another slot which is having a larger area which is meant for inner or running cage. By increasing the area of cross section for the inner or running cage, we can reduce the resistance for the same. And in between the slots, inner slot and outer slot, there will be a narrow slit and the slots can be even stargate type. From the figure, the two type of slots and the cage are clear. 
The principle of operation is same as that of the squirrel cage, three phase induction motor. Here the both cages will be acting simultaneously. The narrow slit between the two slots, that is inner and outer slot, will be providing high permeance to leakage flux. We will consider the starting condition where the rotary is at standstill condition. At that point, the slip is equal to 1 and the rotor frequency will be equal to the stator frequency F itself. Fr is equal to F. At this condition, the leakage reactance of the inner case as well as the impedance of the inner cage will be high and because of that most of the starting current will be flowing through the outer cage. Since the outer cage is having high resistance, it will be providing with the high starting torque and the starting current will be reduced. For starting purpose, outer cage will be having a dominant role over the inner cage. When we consider the running condition, we have the equation that is fr is equal to s into f. When it picks up the speed, the slip will be getting reduced and because of the same, the rotor frequency will be very less. And the same allows the inner cage to have less leakage reactance and less impedance. Because of that, most of the current will be flowing through the inner cage and will be contributing a greater portion for the running torque. Even for running condition, both the cages will be producing separate torques and the resultant torque will be the sum of these two torques which are caused by the inner cage and the outer cage. The torque speed carries of a double cage induction motor is given in the figure. In the figure, the torque that is caused by inner cage and outer cage are separately given and the resultant torque is also given. We can see at the beginning when the speed is equal to zero, the inner cage will be producing less torque and the outer cage with a higher torque because the resistance for the outer cage is higher compared to the inner cage. And we can see the resultant torque from the figure. The resultant torque will be the sum of the torques that are produced by inner cage and outer cage. In order to modify the torque speed carries for a double cage induction motor, we can adjust the cage resistance and leakage reactances. Cage resistance can be adjusted by changing the cross section area of the bars and leakage reactances can be changed by adjusting the depth and width of the slot openings. So we have already seen the disadvantage in the case of a normal squirrel cage induction motor is the starting torque is less and this can be compensated by going for a double cage induction motor. So the double cage induction motor is having an application where may require high starting torque and if the application is of frequent starting and stopping time we can go for double cage induction motor. There are few disadvantages in the case of double cage induction motor. One is the pull out torque is very less compared to the normal squirrel cage induction motor because the two cages that is outer and inner cage will be having the maximum torque at different speed. And for running condition the full load power factor will be reduced because of the additional reactance of the inner cage and the high resistance of the outer cage will be resulting in less efficiency at full load condition. And the cost is comparatively high that is 20 to 30 percentage higher than that of the normal squirrel cage induction motor. Here we have the equivalent circuit for double cage induction motor. Exact equivalent circuit and approximate equivalent circuits are given. We can find 
when we compare the equivalent circuit of double cage induction motor with the equivalent circuit of normal induction motor for the rotor elements we have two sets that is r2i divided by s and r2 zero or r2 o divided by s corresponding to the inner cage and our outer cage and we have x2i and x2 zero corresponding to the inner cage and outer cage the rest is same as that of the equivalent circuit of a normal induction machine we have few applications that are given for the three phase squirrel cage induction motor that is of normal type as well as of double cage type and the classes are divided on the basis of the resistance and reactance of the coils and from the characters of the double cage induction motor and the normal squirrel cage induction motor we can understand for which all applications we use these motors hope you have understood what is meant by double cage induction motor and the torque slip or torque speed characters of the same and the applications thank you